Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy to see you all here. So in today's video, I want to talk about reference genomes. So we have used a reference genome while we were quantifying our RNA-seq reads. So today I want to talk a little more about reference genome in terms of what are reference genomes, how are they built, and what are the different versions available, and which version should one use. Talking about what is a reference genome, a reference genome is a library or database of nucleic acid sequences uh, representing a complete set of genes from a species. So a human reference genome is created uh, from uh, the DNA of different donor individuals and therefore it does not represent the set of genes of any individual person. So if you were to take the sequence of the reference human um, genome, you are not going to be um, able to match it to one individual because it's stitched together from the genes of uh, different individuals. So in the simplest case, uh, and in any individual genome can be used as a reference genome. However, the quality and the sensitivity of your analysis is increased when the reference genome is more representative of wider group of individuals. So each segment of the genome reference should feature um, the sequence most commonly observed across the available individual genomes. While the reference genome is very useful to the genomics field, it is important to keep in mind that the reference genome are just an idea of what a normal organism's genome should look like. Um, so reference genome is not a healthy genome, it is not most commonly observed, it is not the longest, it is not ancestral, it is not the um, average of the global population but rather it's peculiar um, since the reference genome was built not from one individual but from donors so the reference genome is peculiar to those specific uh, donors. The human reference genome ultimately is used for sample comparison with single individual human genomes to show genomic differences and similarities as well as to um, solve biological questions. So some uh, human reference genome applications include identification of all genes, understanding the role of these genes, um, also discovering uh, novel regulatory regions, uh, understanding how uh, these regulatory regions play a role in various mechanisms. Uh, besides that, uh, uh, it is also a uh, human reference genome is also used by geneticists and biologists to identify gene mutations and variants which can cause diseases. So understanding of these uh, variants and mutations can help uh, create better treatment, medicines and cures. Um, it is also used by population geneticists in genome wide association studies. Uh, apart from that, um, this reference genome is also used by personal whole genome sequence testing companies like uh, Nebula Genomics or Dante Labs to provide customers with uh, more accurate DNA uh, results for um, genetic ancestry as well as performing personal health uh, profiling. So talking about how a reference genome is created, um, reference genomes are prepared through a process called uh, de novo genome sequencing. So de novo sequencing occurs when scientists sequence and assemble a genome from scratch without using a reference genome for alignment. So to begin de novo sequencing, scientists uh, created many copies of the DNA of interest. Since reference genome was created from multiple donors, um, the genomic DNA of interest was from multiple donors and that was chopped up uh, into uh, fragments of various sizes. And then all the sequenced pieces, which are called reads, are assembled back together to produce the whole genome sequence. The order of the reads can be computationally inferred by detecting overlapping regions between the reads. The more similarity between the end of one read and the beginning of the another, uh, the more likely that they are um, originating from overlapping sections of the genome. The computer program uh, pieces shorter reads together into larger overlapping chunks and these are called contigs which are short for contiguous sequence. Then there are two approaches taken from here. Either um, all the contigs are compared by computer program and a consensus sequence is uh, generated based on the most frequently occurring base at each location uh, of the genome. Or another approach is the computer program runs an algorithm that finds most likely connection of the contigs, which uh, assembles into larger pieces called scaffolds. And uh, there is enough information sometimes uh, for the assembler to go one step further and connect the scaffolds into complete chromosomes. 
सो सक्सेसिव वर्जन ऑफ ह्यूमन जीनोम रेफरेंस इज कॉमनली कॉल्ड एज असेंबलीज और बिल्ड्स यू माइट हैव हर्ड द टर्म जीनोम बिल्ड्स बिल्ड्स आर नथिंग बट वर्जन सो विद ईच वर्जन देर आर ग्रेजुअल इम्प्रूवमेंट्स इन क्वालिटी विच इज मेड पॉसिबल बाय टेक्नोलॉजिकल एडवांसमेंट एंड इम्प्रूवड सिक्वेंसिंग टेक्निक्स एज वेल एज इम्प्रूवमेंट्स इन रिप्रेजेंटेटिवनेस ऑफ रेफरेंस जीनोम्स इन टर्म्स ऑफ अंडर रिप्रेजेंटेड पॉपुलेशन सिंस द रेफरेंस जीनोम ओरिजिनली वॉज बिल्ड यूजिंग डोनर्स फ्राम स्पेसिफिक पॉपुलेशन और रिस्ट्रिक्टेड टू सर्टन जोग्राफिकल लोकेशन द एफर्ट्स आर इन टू इन टू एडिंग मोर सिक्वेंसेज एंड फ्राम डाइवर्स पॉपुलेशन अक्रॉस वेरियस जोग्राफिकल लोकेशन टू हैव अप्रोप्रिएट रिप्रेजेंटेटिव रेफरेंस जीनोम The most up-to-date version of uh, the human reference genome is GRCH thirty-eight, uh, which was released in December twenty thirteen, and it is a genome reference consortium uh, which is responsible uh, to revise and update uh, these uh, human genome genome reference sequences uh, regularly, and roll out the updates with um, newer improvements uh, in the sequences. often times there is a confusion regarding the naming of uh, these reference genomes so here i am using an example of an earlier version of the human reference genome so grch37 is a reference that is built by a genome reference consortium and this is a baseline human genome reference and that serves as the basis for the other two references here in the comparison so edg19 is a reference that is created uh, by ucsc that is university of california at santa cruz um, and that is based on grch37 uh, b37 is a reference that is created by the broad institute uh, and the reference it's is based on grch37 uh these three are uh, often um called as edg19 references but they are not um directly interchangeable as there are differences in sequences between these references in certain chromosomal regions and uh, in certain contexts a reference genome sequence is available as a fasta file and within this fasta file there are uh, sequences for various chromosomes like chromosome 1 to 22 chromosome x chromosome y and chromosome m that is mitochondrial chromosome In addition to the sequences for these chromosomes, we have unlocalized sequence. So we uh, know what chromosome these sequences originate from, but we do not know uh, exactly what location within the chromosome uh, these sequences lie. So these sequences are identified by the uh, underscore random suffix. In addition to that, we also have unplaced sequences. So for these sequences, we do not know what chromosome they are originating from, and they are identified by uh chromosome underscore u prefix so the combination of the main reference that is uh chromosome 1 to 22 chromosome x y chromosome m unlocalized sequences and unplaced sequences these are uh, form the primary assembly and it is recommended to use the complete primary assembly for all the analysis now talking about the alternate loci um prior to grch37 assembly uh, which was released in 2009 prior to that the human genome uh, reference sequence was represented as a single consensus sequence now there are several regions in the chromosome that display high degree of variability among the population that cannot be adequately represented by a single sequence For this reason the GRC began to provide alternate sequences for regions that showed high variability by including um something called as alternative loci or alternate locus scaffolds so it first introduced this in GRCH37 uh, assembly which was released in 2013 so in that assembly it included three regions with nine alternate locus sequences and in grch38 which is the most up to date recent assembly um there are 178 regions with 261 alternate loci this offers many opportunities to the genomics and bioinformatics communities to adapt analysis procedures to a more sophisticated and representative model of human uh, genome in addition to alternative loci we have sequences for epstein barr virus as the epstein barr virus sequences are endogenously found in most of the uh, population as this virus naturally infects b cells in around 90% of the world population in addition to that we have decoy sequences and these sequences are uh, ones that could not be placed on chromosomes when the reference genome was put together uh, much of the decoy sequences consist of repeats that are difficult to assemble 
and lastly we have sequences corresponding to HLA regions um, these are the sequences for various HLA types and finally when deciding which reference build should one use it is strongly recommended to switch to uh, GRCH38 or HG38 as there are significant improvements from in this version compared to the previous version and some of the significant uh, improvements include uh, addition of many alternative uh, loci um, correction of thousands of small sequencing artifacts uh, which can cause uh, false SNPs and indels to be called um, inclusion of centromeric regions and updates to non-nuclear genomic sequence. So overall there have been major uh, updates with the latest version and it's strongly recommended to switch to um, the GRCH38. So here are two IGV plots um, in which we visualize a gene called ABO in two different genomic bills. Uh, the plot at the top shows um, the gene being visualized in GRCH37, HG19 and the plot at the bottom uh, shows that the gene is visualized in um, using a GRCH38, HG38 genomic build. And just to take a note of the chromosomal locations, they differ in both the genomic builds. So these plots are just to show um, that the chromosomal locations for the same gene differs in both the genomic builds. So just to be mindful of this when we are analyzing our data using either of the genomic builds. Uh, it's also possible to lift over the genomic positions from one genomic build to the other using a tool called liftover. So that's all I had for today's video. I hope you found today's video helpful and informative. If you did, please make sure you hit the subscribe button, like the video, share it, and leave your comments under the comment section. Until next time, see you.